In memory of many of our black brothers and sisters across the ages who have suffered under the lies of academicians, I want to say today is a fantastic day because a Nobel Prize winning scientist who helped discover DNA's double helix structure has been stripped of his honorary titles for repeating an unsubstantiated and reckless suggestion that genes make black people less intelligent. Our winner James Watson was stripped of his title of his Nobel Prize because he continuously peddled lies. And how many such scholars and how many people have suffered because of this? So what we are going to say today is factual. And there are many lies that have been projected. Giuseppe Fellini, an Italian grave robber, stole one of these most exquisite, highly technically produced product of highest quality of gold and many, many other precious metals put across it. They never believed that it was made by Africans. Queen Amani Shaketo Bengu is famous. She is known to have repelled the invading Roman forces sent to conquer Nubia by uh, Emperor Augustus. But above, on top of all that, we have to say Africans are inventive. These Bengus and many other metal works were already an old technology among Africans. That's why Europeans were attracted to them and they store thousands and thousands of uh, uh, these artifacts. They give us the timeline of the Stone Age, about 9,000 years before present, Bronze Age and Iron Age. Africans dominated across and Africans were the best in terms of inventiveness and discovering how to convert stone and other materials to usable tools. Do you know? Centuries before carbon steel was subsequently made in uh, Central Europe, black people in Africa had already perfected the iron and steel making technology. This is a fact. It can never be denied. There is proof. We are going to show you that proof. Distinguished archaeologists Engineers, historians, and sociologists have recently traced the history of iron and steel making back to Africa, including many technical details and discussions across the whole of uh, the earth. They now know it. It's only that the media has not yet started to go for it. There it is. The technology of making carbon steel proving that Africans invented iron and steel making Technology. The higher uh, in Tanzania made carbon steel and created the heat efficiency that make carbon steel. You can study and see them here. The higher people are believed to be the earliest and the oldest people with the technology to make and invent carbon steel using technology. The heat furnace technology which was later co-opted and taken to Europe and given the credit given to others. So we remember what Dr. Watson did, the prejudices that runs across all scholastic fields and how many people, black people, have suffered. There is carbon steel that black people made. Today it's being made in uh, many industries on earth but it started as an african form of technology and the metal worship so from carbon steel you can make fences chains knives and tools then you can have other alloys from uh, uh, carbon and you can make turbines aeroplanes cutting welding and drilling tools chisels hammers any tool you hold and use comes from what africans discovered Thousands and thousands of years ago. There is the example, and there is the website you should go and look at in the Great Lakes uh, region of Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Sudan, every all that part. Many tribes are known to have produced the steel. The higher tribesmen shown here were already experts in ancient times. This is what they made. The Tueres, there is the Bellows, there is the, the Blast Furnace, you shall see shortly, who copied it. There is iron technology, uh, making iron did not come to Africa from some place. It's a lie. It did not come to Africa via Carthage. It's a lie. The chariot, the wheel, everything was made by black people in ancient Africa. So distinguished scholars have agreed. It's up to you. You can continue to believe your lies and your prejudices. The person usually given credit with the, uh, inventing steel is German-born metallurgist uh, Wilhelm who used an open heath furnace in the 19th century. We have already seen that 3,000 years before him, the open heath furnace was already making high-grade carbon steel. 
cup iron was already being made. So you can study about this and the invention and how it came about from uh, Time Magazine, September 25, 1978. It's very clear, straightforward, telling the people that Africans were already masters. There we are. An iron smelting festival was held at the royal city of Marowe, Marua in Sudan, with two main aims. First, to provide the opportunity for experimental archaeology to allow the team to try to replicate the ancient iron smelting techniques to learn more about the ingredients and methods used by the iron smelters of Meroe. I just want to add an edict here. Our ancient ancestors said such technology was not for public consumption or for scholarly consumption. It is for private and a guilt that is passed in secret societies. There again, in ancient Africa, Africans in ancient Egypt, making and forging and creating Metal. There you are, is African. You can never say this is Asian or European or Chinese or Arab. These are proper, true Africans. The Arab who is in Egypt, Arab who is in Sudan, the Arab who is white Arab, they are not Africans. They are not original. They came from Turkey. They know that. There is a, a relief from the Mastaba of Nyankan Moon and Kanyume Hutefu metal workers at a forge in ancient Egypt in a place called Sakare, which they call Sakara, about 3,000 years before common era. There they are. Straight making steel, making iron, making uh, metal products. Straightforward. You can study more about this from the book uh, Blacks and uh, Science of Volume 2 by Robin Walker. Get this book. You can get it from Lulu. You can get it from Amazon. Study and read it and get motivated. Get your uh, steam high and start to open your brain and remove that uh, uh, James Watson uh, bell curve lie that you have been told that we are dumb. Our IQ is low. That's wrong. We have already proved that. Uh, writer Dodo Diana says it is important to understand this about iron because it is the important yardstick of civilization that has been denied us. You can study the UNESCO Division of Intercultural Dialogue and the books written about that. Metallurgy and the tools, many advances in metallurgy and the tool making were made across the entirety of Africa, ancient Africa. These include steam engines, metal chisels, and saws. These are the tools that you didn't know were made by Africans, founded by Africans. Copper and iron tools and weapons. Nails were discovered by black people. Glue, carbon, steel, and bronze weapons. And ah, advances in Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda between 1,500 and 2,000 years ago surpassed those of Europeans then and were astonishing to Europeans when they learned of them. Listen to this one. Ancient Tanzanian furnaces could reach 1,800 degrees Celsius, warmer than those of the Romans. You can read Brooks L. African Achievements, Leaders, Civilization and Cultures of Ancient Africa, 1971, or Show D. Uh, Still Making in Ancient uh, Africa, Blacks in Science, Ancient and Modern. You can study these books, and proof is there. We go on, and in West Africa, the Nok uh, culture produced the terracotta sculptures associated with metalwork, proving that the independent invention of iron in Africa is justified, is founded on proper ground. It never came from elsewhere. There are no other races on earth that produce sculpture such as this or art such as this. Controversial findings from a French team working at the site of Obui in the Central Republic, uh, in the Central African Republic, challenge the diffusion model, which is a lie. That uh, technology to make steel came from somewhere else and diffused into Africa. It's a total, it's a total complete lie. At fact, they suggested that sub-Saharan Africans were making iron by at least 2000 BCE and possibly much earlier. Well before Middle Easterners, says the team member Felipe Fluzini, an archaeometallurgist at the uh, University of Technology of Belfort, Montbriard in Mer Belfort, France. The team unearthed a blacksmith's forge and copious iron at fact, including pieces of iron bloom and two needles as they describe in recent monograph. Effectively, the oldest known sites for iron metallurgy are in Africa, Fluzini says. Hither Pringle science, you can study here also. You can go on this forum and see for yourself. The Mwenem Tapa economy was highly industrialized around mining of gold and agriculture. One Arabic uh, scholar once said, Africans had no name for gold. I'm giving you the name for gold. The Bantu said the name for gold. It's called Mukute or Longote because it is related to a specific tree 
Once you see that tree, you know there's gold under it. It's that technology. That's why they didn't have a problem of surveying because it's spirit technology. There it is. These are Angunis making steel in Zululand. I, 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 the Kosa, the, the Sutu, the Shangans had all specific guilds amongst themselves that were able to make uh, iron and steel product. You can study again this website we are giving you there proving that fact. Southern Africa was also everywhere. Every tribe could make such tools. There they are, Monomtapa. This is the map of Monomtapa, 1685. The image thanks to Wikipedia. And these are the tools that are associated before the European ever set foot uh, into Africa. You can start also the Journal of African Archaeology, which shows you many, many, many proofs. You can go to this web uh, website. They're showing there where there are so many abstracts. And the proofs, the 14th century AD furnace at the earthworks site of Munza is one of the earliest dated examples of iron smelting remains from Western Uganda. There you are. Straightforward, open, clear proof of what we are saying. In conclusion, therefore, the colonizers of Africa and the enslavers of Africans are the biggest culprits and plunderers of African technical heritage. They have the audacity to call Africans dumb like Dr. Watson there. Now we have proved that all of the facts, the bell curves, the IQ tests are all a lie. Based on lies. Yet their museums are full of cultural treasures they stole and robbed from Africa. Africans never went to Europe to steal any artifacts because there was nothing to, there was nothing to steal. And there's looters. High carbon steel making is an African indigenous invention. 1,900 years plus or more before any European knew about iron. It is time to reconnect to the spirit of our ancestral inventions, to the spirit of abilities that is lying in us, the power of inventions. Technology and invention is of the spirit of our ancestors and lies in our genes. Connect us on our email, lmtumizulu at gmail.com and visit us on our website, www.lifespiritofamencamp.com This is Priest Rabbi Elam Tumisulu of Committee Hebrew Ethics. Thank you, Siabonga, Tatenda, till we meet. Stay well, stay connected to your ancestral inventive spirit. Thank you, goodbye. <music>